Okay, so we were talking about our molar volume and we saw that any gas irrespective of the nature of the gas its volume is 22.4 liter at STP its molar volume that means the volume of one mole of the gas is 22.4 liter at STP so I mean generally from molar volume and this 22.4 liter thing they give questions we we'll go to these questions when we go to the reactions I mean uh, just for the molar volume for the time being we can have questions like um, we have suppose 5 gram of helium and 4 gram of H2 so what are the ratios of their molar volumes well so not molar volumes what are the ratios of their volumes at STP so H2 means its molecular weight is 2 gram so 4 gram means 2 into, I mean, sorry, uh, so 4 gram is 2 moles because 2 gram is 1 mole. So this is 2 moles. So what would it be? What would its volume be? 2 into 22.4 liter, the temperature, uh, temperature and pressure are STP and helium also has an atomic weight of 2 gram so 5 gram so 2 gram will be 1 mole and 5 gram would be 5 by 2 moles so it would be just 5 by the volume would be 5 by 2 into 22 to the 22.4 liter so the ratio of their volumes will be of helium to H2 that is would be 5 by 2 into 22.4 divided by 2 into 22.4 which is 5 by 4 and again you can see that in this equation which we saw PV is equal to NRT if you fix P and T constant like we did in STP and R is always a constant. So you can say that V would be proportional to N. Right? Because these three are constant. So the change in N will directly result in a change in V. So that is why uh, for any gas, the volume would be proportional to its number of moves. So if you are asked to find the ratio of it of volumes, of two gases that would be equal to the ratio of the number of moles isn't it if temperature and pressure are constant so this is just a basic example we need the all these in stoichiometry when we get, get into reactions like how much volume of this gas is involved how much volume of that gas is involved when those type of questions Now, we come to, I mean, on, uh, this molar volume was actually a part of the story. Concentration. Now, day and night we use this word concentration. I mean, you can use it like I am concentrating on my work or this is too much of concentration, I mean this this syrup is very concentrated. We call uh, our concentration, we call it as the amount of anything, the uh, what can you say, the amount of anything present in another substance. That is very a very crude definition of concentration. Actually in chemistry, concentration is not just one thing. There are various types of concentration. For example, the first type of concentration is nothing but our density. 
as we all know, density is what? Mass by volume. So, this is nothing but mass by volume. That is, if there is a substance whose mass is suppose x gram, if there is a, and its volume is suppose y gram per cc, uh, sorry, y cc, then its density would be x by y gram per cc. And this gram per cc or gram per milliliter is a unit of density. And there is another unit of density commonly used, which is kg per meter. And 1 gram per cc is equal to, or you can say 1000 grams per cc is equal to 1 kg per meter cube. Just convert kg, gram to kg, that is divided by 1000, and cc to meter cube, that is divided by 10 to the power 6. So, this density, you can say, or density uh, we know is mass by volume. We now get into this more commonly used in the while doing experiment, which is specific gravity. Now this specific gravity, it's nothing but a ratio. That means it's dimensionless. It has no dimensions. And it's the relative density of a substance with respect to water at 4 degree Celsius. Now what this means is that the specific gravity is the ratio of the density of that substance of, of whose specific gravity you are calculating the, uh, related, the density of that substance divided by the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. And the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius is considered to be 1 gram per cc or 1000 kg per meter cube. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I just made a mistake. I said 1000 gram per cc is 1 kg per meter cube. It's 1 gram per cc is equal to 1000 kg per meter cube. Just, it's the other way around. Because obviously, kg, gram uh, will be divided by 10 to the power 3, and this will be divided by 10 to the power 6. So, the 10 to the power 6 will go up and become 1000, dividing by 10 to the power 3. So, now 1000 gram per cc is not 1 kg per meter cube, it's 1 gram per cc is 1000 kg per meter cube. So, if you are taking obviously the density of water as 1000 kg per meter cube to find the specific gravity of the substance, you need to take the density of that substance also in kg per meter cube. Because since it is dimensionless, you have to take both the units same. And if you are taking in gram per cc, then similarly the specific gravity would be taken, the density of that substance would be taken gram per cc. Now oh, there are, I mean, just for an example, if you if somebody says that the specific gravity of the substance is 3.2, calculate the density of that substance. And it is given that the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius is 1 gram per cc. So, nothing 3.2 is equal to what? The density of that substance 
divided by the density of water at four degrees Celsius, which is one gram per cc. So the density would be 3.2 into 1, 3.2, and since this is in gram per cc, this one also would be in gram per cc. Nothing great in this. 